So I've always been interested in the history of shoe companies and in the shoemaking process. And so as part of this channel, I've come up with a new series where I will interview founders of shoe companies and shoemakers to maybe allow us to peek behind the curtain and see what goes into starting a shoe company or creating new shoes. I'm very pleased for my very first interview to have the founder of George Lyon Shoes, Josh Spears, sit down with me for an interview to talk about how he came up with the idea for George Lyon Shoes and the process of doing it so far. I learned a lot of things about what it takes to start a shoe company, uh, the timing, and, and just really the passion that it takes to do something like this. Let's get started. All right, I am here with uh, Josh Spears, uh, the uh, founder of George Lyon Shoes. Josh, it's great to have you here on the Shoe Enthusiast channel. Yeah, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity, Carla. No problem. So let's uh, let's just start. Why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? Um, yeah, so as you said, my name is Josh Spears. Um, I won't go too far back with this, but uh, I'll give you just sort of my, my maybe my adult background. I um, went to undergrad at North Carolina State University, spent much of my life in Raleigh, North Carolina, so did my undergrad in business management. Um, always kind of knew I wanted to go into law. And so I, I took that business degree and applied to law school, uh, did most of my law school at the University of Louisville in Kentucky, uh, and then finished up at University of Texas, Austin, which is where I currently live now. So I do, uh, tr I'm an attorney, I do transactional law. So most of my day is reviewing contracts and negotiating contracts. Um, but then, as you know, the other parts of my day and nights entail uh, my shoe company, George Lyon Shoes. So that's I've got a wife, uh, three kids, 11. We've been married 15 years. I have an 11 year old boy, nine year old boy, and a three year old girl. So, stay wow. pretty three kids, full time job, and a shoe company. That, that's quite a lot to, uh, to try to handle in one day. So, what brought you from you know, the law into a shoe company? <laughs> it, it, actually, the two are very intertwined, believe it or not. I am. Um, you know, as a lawyer, we dress up a lot. And uh, what I would find myself doing is I'd, I'd find a really great pair of shoes. And specifically, uh, the ones I found were a, a very particular tan pair of shoe uh, shoes. And it took me literally weeks to find a belt to match those shoes. And so I thought to myself jokingly and said it to my colleagues at work, hey, somebody should start a shoe company that uh, sells really nice shoes that last a long time, but then throws in the belt, gives it to you when you buy the shoes so you don't have to worry about finding a matching belt. So I let that thought sort of marinate for a few years. And then finally I said to myself, hey, why don't I do that? And so that was the moment George Lyon Shoes was born was when I realized, hey, I could do this. I could be the one to solve that problem. Yeah, that, that is actually a, a problem in trying to find, especially with brown, trying to find the right shade of yeah. brown that matches the shoe, especially if it's museum leather. That just throw, throws me off 100%. Right. <laughs> Tell me about the, the history of George Lyons. So when did you start the company and you know, how did it come about? And all um, that yeah, so that idea was probably three and a half years ago or so is when I decided to start doing that. I did some sort of anecdotal interviews to make sure other people had that issue as well. And of course you can buy belts, uh, you know, your Aldens or your Allen Edmonds, they do sell belts that will match their shoes, but, but again, they'll cost you a pretty penny to get those um, belts with it. And so um, about three and a half years ago is when I started um, literally just cold calling folks in New York city. I would call leather uh, production facilities. I would call belt production facilities, um, shoe, manufacturers and um, not only did I sort of learn a little bit about the industry at that point, but I also was able to make some contacts there that led to me finding the factory that I currently use in Spain. And um, so I, 
decided to use the name George Lion Shoes because it's a mashup of my third great grandfather, whose name is George Spears, and his wife, Janet Lyon. So George Lyon. And uh, they were immigrants from Scotland to the United States in the 1800s, about 1850s. And uh, just have always been a great example to me as I learned about them uh, because they were entrepreneurs in their own right. They literally walked from New York City to Utah and established a general store there. And um, so kind of a, a little nod to my ancestors by naming the, the company George Lion Shoes. That's great. So as, as those who watch my channel know, I did review your Benjamin boot, uh, which is fantastic, by the way. I think the more I wear it, the more I like the boots. It's really comfortable to wear. And I, I like the pebble grain leather that I really, I was iffy on at first, to be honest with you. Uh, but now I'm, I'm really just taken, taken by your shoe. I really love Good. it. Uh, what are the other shoes you produce uh, in addition to the Benjamin boot? So with being a, um, sort of a, a young startup, I guess, I wanted to start really simple and just sort of prove the concept first. And so I'm still sort of in that stage. So I, I wanted to start very basic. I wanted a, a Chucka boot, which is the one you tried, that Benjamin boot. And then I wanted what I thought was sort of the staple that that is somewhat versatile as well, which is just the plain toe derby. So I have okay. the plain toe derby, but I did that one in two different colors. I've got that real rich sienna tan color. And then I've got just a, a basic black color with both with the tan natural sole. Um, and I do have three new styles in the works now. I'm hoping to get the prototypes, actually. I'm excited about that. I'm supposed to get those in the next, uh, probably next few weeks or so. Um, and so looking forward to those. Those will be a cap toe, semi brogue, um, a, uh, a, oh goodness, a loafer, a, a suede loafer, and yeah, then nice. a traditional boot. So looking forward to those. Um, but for now, started with those simple styles just to kind of prove the concept. I'm looking forward to seeing the, uh, the new ones you're coming out with. Uh Especially yeah, I'm excited. Uh, how's it been like working with uh, the, the factories in Spain? Uh, it's actually been really great. Uh, I I went sort of back and forth initially when I was uh, first starting. There was a factory in Italy I was looking at as well. And so I actually flew uh, to both of the factories. I flew to the Italian factory and they did a great job. I was really impressed with them. Um, but I just, I really fell in love with this factory in Spain and, and the people there. It did help a little bit that I speak Spanish and not Italian, so <laughs> a little easier to uh, communicate with the folks there at the, the factory in Spain. But uh, I, I really like, they've been doing it for over a hundred years. And so you know that they've really proven themselves in the industry. Um, they do a great Goodyear welt. As you know, my company has uh, focused on Goodyear welted shoes. And so they do a great job with that. And um, so, you know, there's always, it's always a little tough when you're a, an ocean away from them and you're trying to work through that. And anything that I, it, it, when I first started the company, I, I, the shoe came to me and it was a little too pointy in the toe. So I said, no, let's do a little bit rounder toe. And so that's a few weeks back and forth for that to get the new one. And so there are definitely, um, some struggles with that once in a while, but, but you get that with any factory, really. There's no factory that's going to just pump out their shoes like that. And you don't really want them to because you want them to have that style. So, or, or oh. the quality. Well, how long did it take between, you know, when you first uh, pitched the idea of the shoe to the, to the factory, till you finally got it looking exactly the way you, you wanted it to, when you knew you were ready, that this was going to be the new George Lyon shoe? Uh, probably, gosh, I, I would at least a year and a half because I wanted to make sure that they were exactly how I wanted them to go out to the public. And so sketched the, sketched the shoe for them, um, made sure they had some sort of existing last that could be what I wanted basically. And so we, like I said, we went back two or three times making sure everything was correct. Um, it, I probably would have gone faster if I flew out there, but you know, flying out to Spain every week can get expensive. So, um, but yeah, it was probably, I'd say at least a year and a half before we actually went to market from when they saw my sketch. Do you have any uh, background in shoemaking or are you self-taught? Yeah, yeah, pretty much self-taught actually. I, I've, I've always been into style for even from the time I was in school, you know, in middle school, high school, I always, at least I thought of myself as stylish. And so uh, always have been into that. Um, as I said, I started making cold calls and one of the, the people I found through those cold calls has been somewhat of a mentor to me um, who has started a number of shoe companies, helps other shoe companies and 
and was really the one that helped hook me up with the representative of the factory in Spain. Um, his name is David Siskin. He's uh, fairly well known, I guess, in the industry, but I've learned a lot from them and um, just you learn as you go still, but I, but I always have had an eye, I think, to recognize quality and, um, and aesthetics at the same time. So yeah, no, no, certainly no d degree in design or anything like that, but, but I do fancy myself an artist too. So I feel like I've always enjoyed drawing. So that's always fun to me when I'm sketching out new styles. Out of any given day, what shoe do you wear the most? I actually, um, I love, okay, and I don't know if I'm supposed to plug my own company here or not, but I love my Benjamin boot. I, I wore that, I think, every day last, uh, last fall and winter. And, and part of that was intentional because I wanted to make sure it was still rugged and, and uh, wore well. But it just, it went with everything, you know, when I was, uh, especially when I was more casual. When I dress up, I do like to, to wear something slightly more um, dressy, like a good black cap toe. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a shoe company called Finsbury that has a great black cap toe. Um, but uh, I would say I'm more of a chuck a boot kind of guy unless I am dressing up. Um, but I do, as, as with my um, derby, I do like a black shoe but with a little pop of tan with on that mm -hmm. sole just to it's a little bit more casual i understand that but i like that kind of look and so i would say if i were wearing a shoe all the time it's probably going to be a, a chuck a boot now i will say carlin if i can add another category in here yeah i've always kind of considered myself somewhat of a i guess they call it a sneaker head so it i, I my favorite shoe of all time is the uh, Jordan, it, it would be back then it was the Nike Air, now Jordan has his own company, but it's the Nike Air Jordan 11s in the Concord colorway. It's the uh, white upper with a black patent leather around it. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite shoe of all time. It's just unfortunately not versatile enough to wear in, my, my cur in either of my careers, I guess, but I do love that shoe. What's one thing you've really learned about business, about yourself, uh, throughout this entire process of starting and maintaining the shoe company? Yeah, I, I think probably the biggest thing I've learned is just, it's really um, not tested my patience, but it's really helped me to grow more patient. When you're talking about growing a business, it's not something typically that happens overnight. And so I've had many uh, nights kind of had to come to the real realization that, Okay, and especially I'll say, as you said, we're, we're filming this during sort of still the pandemic mm -hmm. and I launched the company right before the pandemic. And so I have had to have those conversations with myself saying, look, Josh, just do what you can, keep persevering. Um, you've got the ability to ride this out. And at some point, you know, it, it'll just take off. I think as people, more and more people see the quality of the shoes and as they wear them and they see that they, uh, they wear very well, um, it, you're just waiting for that one tipping point to happen. And so for me, I think the, the thing I've learned, I guess, is perseverance and uh, having faith in yourself. I feel like I've had to have a sense of self-confidence with, yes, this can work. I know it can. It's a good idea. Uh, so just keep pushing forward with it. And um, so, I mean, you know, it, it sounds a little cheesy or schmaltzy, but I, I have learned a lot about about myself in the business realm because I've always, I went from business school to law school uh, directly into a legal career. And so I kind of had put my business side on the back burner and now that's coming out more. And so I'm, I'm, it's fun to sort of explore that side now too. Is there anything that you find that's kind of surprised you throughout this whole process? Um, that's a great question. Um, I, probably going back to what we talked about earlier, just the timeline of things where it's, you know, oh, I want to change this little piece of it. It's tough when you're a small fish in a big pond. You can't blame those factories for um, putting these bigger orders first, but certainly you got to think if it doesn't come to me exactly how I want it, you've got to build that into your timeline. I remember when I was um, sort of wanting to launch on a certain timeline, but I had to change some things about the shoes you know, your timeline goes bust and you got to kind of start over and bump it out. And I was wanting to get a, a certain time of the year to launch and that didn't work. And so, yeah, I, I would probably say that. Actually, it's, it is funny you say that because I've, I've um, heard other interviews with other um, founders of smaller shoe companies who 
kind of say the same thing about the factories that, you know, um, what a lot of people don't know who are listening to this is that a lot of factories make shoes for, for many different companies. And some of the smaller ones will say, well, the big guy gets their big order and they're going to get their order out first. And then, so it ends up making things the, the timeline, uh, uh, gets kind of slowed down. So I, I've heard that before. I think I've, I've listened to an interview with the uh, founder of sons of Henry, uh, saying basically the exact same thing. So, um, yeah, and it's nothing new. I mean, I, I read the documentary of the um, gentleman who started Nike, and it was the same thing. Um, oh, goodness, I can't remember his name. Phil, Phil Knight, I think was his name. Yeah. Uh, even when he was working with the Japanese factories, it was the same thing where he would, it would just take forever sometimes to make changes, and then he'd get the orders wrong when they came in. So it, it is, it's tough dealing with factories sometimes, but I do really love the factory I work with, and I love the folks that are there at the factory. But And I certainly can't blame them for prioritizing a, you know, a Ralph Lauren over George Lyon shoes for the time being. But hopefully I'll get to the point where I, I can uh, become one of those. Yeah, you'll, you'll be squeezing them out, going, no, no, my order come, comes Ralph comes who? <laughs> Ralph who? Who's Ralph? Or it's called it on Ralph level to quote a Kanye West uh, <laughs> yeah. there. So I want to go back to something you said. So when exactly did you did you launch George Lyon? Um, I think it was officially. Oh, I should have I should have written that down, but probably I'm looking at the date on my computer right now. Twenty. I think it was late 2017. Well, maybe 2018. So it's been less than a couple of years, really, since I've, since I've really, I, well, since I formed the website and everything, but I officially launched it, I think in about January of this year. So maybe that's more to your question. Yeah, um, it was I, kind of I started the company a, a couple of years ago, but again, didn't launch until early this year. This is kind of one of those uh, hindsight 2020. If you could go back and change anything about how you got the company started and how you did it, what would you have done differently? Uh, I think for me, if I could go back to my old self a couple years back or maybe even a few years back when I first had the idea, I would just say, don't rush anything. Give yourself plenty of time. Maybe go out to the factory earlier on. I didn't go out right away, and I think I would uh, I would change that. I would go out sooner to just sort of get the lay of the land, know what I'm looking at, build a relationship with them at the factory, and um, and just sort of know that it's going to take longer than you think. One of the things that I didn't factor in was, and this isn't a huge deal, but I, I you probably as you remember when you get shoes through George Lyon Shoes. They come in a single box. It's mm -hmm. slightly bigger than a normal shoe box because in that box is a, a a foam custom insert where the shoes are resting in there nicely, and then the belt is rolled up right next to the shoes. Really nice presentation. Um, I, I'm working on getting a patent. On, we're patent pending on the foam insert, and so obviously that can take a really long time. So the sooner you start things like that, the better off you are timeline wise. Um, patents take a long time anyways, but uh, at least we would have been further down the road with that. Whereas we are patent pending now, but that can take quite a while to get the full patent issued. So just, you know, build in more time than you think. Don't, don't worry. The market's always going to be there. I feel like I was always worried about missing some wave and, um, you know, should have just relax and, and do my thing. I want to talk about the matching belt a little bit because I really, I mean, I, I admit when I, when I think of value for shoes, cause that's how I approach shoes is not necessarily like what's expensive, what's cheap, or what gives me the best value. And you touched on it earlier by saying most companies, your Allen Edmonds, Alden, uh, they will, they do have belts, but they're expensive. So you got an expensive shoe, expensive belt. When I, if I, if I took the price of a belt, which is anywhere from 100, 120, 150, sometimes $200, yeah. add it to a shoe, it's, it's a great, great value. So that's why I really, one thing I really liked when I, when I saw your idea on your website, and that's how I found you first was your website, was I thought, this is actually tremendous value for somebody who is actually looking for a belt. But I want to, I want to get this question out to you, because I, I think I asked it to you before, but it's about the leather. So how how do you manage to get a perfectly matched belt yeah yeah so they are from the same um factories or from the, the same tanner excuse me um but the it can't be the same exact piece of leather because different thicknesses for shoes versus belts um 
but uh, you, you, for instance, the tan, the sienna shoe, um, they both come in a box calf and then they are hand dyed um, by the artisans there at the factory. And so I, when I was there in Spain with them, I worked out the exact shade that I wanted it. And so they always dye it to as close to that master piece that we have uh, that they can get it. And so um, same leather from the same uh, tannery, but hand dyed. And then for the, the um, Benjamin boot, it's, they're going to have the same grain on it. Uh, and again, they just, it's the same leather, just a different thickness. And so uh, that was, I wanted to make sure that that was a key piece of my business. And as you said, I do think it creates some value. I had some people early on say, oh yeah, but you're just going to raise the price of the shoes to cover the belts. And if you're familiar at all with the industry, you'd know that I did not do that. I looked at sort of the market value. We're not necessarily trying to compete on lower price or anything like that, because I think the quality is reflected in that price. And so um, we do, but we do, for lack of a better term, eat the cost of the belt because I want to give that value to the customer. Because I think I make shoes that I would want to wear and I know that I would want the matching belt. And so that's what I, what I give. And so, uh, yes, it is. Uh, it's, it's an extra step, I guess, because they have to do those belts and they're uh, done in the same factory as the shoes and then sent to finish, you know, for the buckle and the stitching on the feather edge um, to a, a place down the road from the factory, but they're all done right there together. Actually, what I really liked was not just, you know, with the Benjamin boot uh, is not just this, you know, the matching color, but it was the same kind of leather, same kind of pebble grain leather. And that's what I really, and I had noted that in the review, which I thought was really, really cool. Cause you know, uh, it, it's like a small detail, but it's something I think if you're pretty serious about, you know, style, if you notice those things. And so that's the first thing I noticed was I was like, it's not just the, the same color it is the same texture. And so it's the same kind of leather. So I really, yeah. I really did. I really did like that. I've asked a bunch of questions here. So I guess what I, what I'll kind of finish up on uh, is, is there anything that you want people to know about George Lyon shoes that I have maybe failed to ask? Cause I had a bunch of questions, but just something you want people to know about your, your company, um, maybe how they can find you or, or anything. This is kind of your forum. <laughs> my, my uh, quick commercial for uh, my infomercial. <laughs> yeah. So, so really, I mean, just check us out online, give us a chance. It's, we do offer free shipping and free returns because it's an online only. I think that, that you got kind of got to do that so that people can try them and, and make sure that they like them. Um, I, I think also one thing I didn't mention is a portion of, of each sale of each shoe goes to a, a charity called Kiva and uh, Kiva has been around for a number of years. They're well trusted, highly rated by the sort of the charity watchdogs. And they do uh, micro loans for underserved populations in the US and around the world. And I thought that that would fit well with sort of the story of George Lyon Shoes with my ancestors being entrepreneurs and everything. From their success, they were able to help uh, children in their community go to school and get an education and better themselves. And so um, I also, think that there are many entrepreneurs out there who just don't get a leg up or a hand up. And so I, I think that Kiva is a great uh, vehicle for them because they do micro loans to where they have a little skin in the game versus just giving money away. Um, but those individuals are able to get their entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurial spirit out there and start their business or get their education and things like that. And so a portion of each sale goes to that. And, and then um, I think other than that, I, I just want people to try them out because I think when you try them on and you wear them, you're, you see the quality and you see that they're worth it. And so getting folks to share the posts that I put out there and, and just really build any sort of buzz they can, that's how these uh, smaller companies can gain traction in the market that's dominated by the big guys like uh, Alan Edmonds and those sure. folks. Um, you know, I will, I will ask one more. Um, this is all about being attention to details. Tell, tell me about the tartan pattern uh, in the box that uh, that when you get a pair of George Lyon shoes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So first of all, I wanted the unboxing experience because you're paying a decent amount for shoes. It, it is sort of, I think, market price for a pair of Goodyear welted shoes. But I still wanted you to have a good unboxing experience. And so the foam insert is part of that. The way the box opens is part of that. Um, 
but as you said, inside the box is a tartan pattern print, and that tartan pattern is one of the tartan patterns of my Scottish heritage from the, our, our family. And so, um, and, and part of our company uh, motto is the term advance, and that also comes from my coat of arms for my family name, for the Spears family name. And so I've tried to work in little uh, pieces of my family history or genealogy into the company. And I've said uh, in the, I think it's on our website that there's a little Scottish spirit in each box because there's just such a, a fighting spirit and a will that the Scottish people have that uh, I think we can all use a little bit of that. But yeah, the, the tartan pattern does come from, from my family. So I guess the very end here, I, it's, I'm gonna do a few rapid fire questions here. Let's do it. Shoe related, maybe not shoe related. I don't know, the question is just gonna come in my head and we'll see what happens. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, all right. Boots, Chuck or Chelsea? Uh, Chuck uh, all day long. Box calf or suede? Box calf. Taylor Swift or Katy Perry? <laughs> uh, I love country music, so I'm gonna go Taylor Swift on this one because I think she was that, like, that's, started as a good country. She's singer. a bit more she's a bit more country, I admit, than, than Katy Perry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one book everybody should read before they die. Well, I know I mentioned this earlier, but I loved the book Shoe Dog. I mean, it was really a inspiring book, and, and it really for somebody who's starting a company or thinking about starting a company, Shoe Dog is the book about Phil Knight, the founder of Nike. It's awesome. If you could own only three pairs of shoes for the rest of your life, what would they be? Oh, I would own a black cap toe Oxford. I would own a um, chukka boot, really of any kind. I love all chukkas. And um, I, I gotta go with the sneaker on the last one, the Jordan uh, 11 Concord. What do you think about the dress sneaker, yay or nay? I, I have not been that big of a fan of it, actually. I, they've got the, with the leather upper where sometimes it's some sort of a brogue and then sort of the white sole. I know Cole Haan does a lot of those. Mm -hmm. I personally am not, I don't own a pair of those. I'm not a huge fan of those. Um, it, it's a little bit of a mixture of two things that I don't think need to be mixed. Um, but I, I understand the functionality of them. And so I'm not going to knock someone for wearing them but I don't foresee George Lyon shoes coming out with a pair of those in the, in the future, or at least in the near future. Favorite band or musician? Uh, I love Jason Mraz. He's a singer songwriter. Uh, most people know him, I feel like, but I, I love him. He's great. Every CD he's made is great. And our CD it dates me a little bit, but every record he's put out is, is, uh, is awesome. Worst shoe style ever. <laughs> Uh, so I, I lived in uh, New Mexico for a couple of years and there, and I, I don't know if it was unique to New Mexico, but you got to Google this if you've never seen them. They're called Z coils and um, <laughs> they on their heel, they're a tennis shoe, but they have a um, literally a visible coil from the heel up to the <laughs> <laughs> sort of the out the uh, outsole and so it's the weirdest looking shoe ever and when you walk in it which i've seen people walk in them terrible so ugliest shoe i've ever seen and i'm i'm not sure that they're even made anymore rightly so i'm gonna leave it at that because that was a great answer because now i'm gonna google that and see google what z coils z yeah. coil okay well i appreciate you uh sitting down for this interview thank you for for joining me and uh I look forward to the new models of George Lyons shoes that'll be coming out uh, soon. And hopefully uh, I'll be reviewing them uh, when they do. Absolutely, thank you.